Well, good morning. It's uh, very early here in England. I'm on a bit of a mission today to uh, shoot some expired Kodak Varicolor 3 film, sheet film that I got. Uh, good buddy of mine, Bob, gave me a box of this and I've wanted to use it for something. And I'm actually headed uh, on a trip next week across England and Wales to uh, work on a camera review. And I thought it could be cool to start maybe using this film to uh, photograph like old filling stations and classic cars and stuff like that uh, here in the UK. But before I do that and go and shoot a bunch of this, I obviously want to uh, test it out and just make sure it's not total trash. So that's the plan today. Uh, woke up nice and early and headed down here to the new forest to this really cool old classic garage that I photographed before. But um, unfortunately, Today, there's like a bunch of new Range Rovers and stuff parked out front of it. So uh, not the look I'm after, unfortunately, but it is early, it's like seven. So time to come up with a plan B, drive around and find something else. But at the very least, I want to shoot a few sheets of this, take it back home. We're going to develop it with some new chemicals I got, scan it and see how it looks. But I think right now we'll get to the car and uh, see if we can find something else. So it's uh, about an hour later, just drove uh, way along the coast. A couple other locations on my list, uh, two in particular that I think are probably going to work uh, for what I need to do. There is one here I want to detour uh, to this really interesting garage. It's kind of raining out a little bit, misty, typical British winter, but um, check this out and then maybe go to the others. So this is the first place I had in mind, photographed this before, but again, when I was here the other times, there were some pretty, um, Interesting cars out. Not today. Time to go on to the next. Find something today at some point. Okay, so just got to this really cool spot. It looks like it has a ton of potential. Super quiet here. Gonna put the camera down, see if I can find the owner. Uh, there's a really cool pump over there to photograph. So uh, come back, grab it, show you guys, and hopefully set up. Just went and talked to the owner. This is the place here. It's an incredible old garage on what used to be the main road here. And there's this awesome, awesome old pump over there by the tree I'll take you over and show you. Super kind guy said I can photograph that. He even moved his car for me and there's a couple old cars out back. So um, uh, this is gonna be perfect. It only took me about four hours to find a place, but uh, this is better than I could have hoped for. So go have a look. <laughs> You just do not see stuff like that anymore. Apparently this place has been here since the 30s uh, in the family. So this right here, I think will be, uh, make for a nice image. Especially overcast weather, lots of green. Go set up. F11 at an eighth of a second, ISO 100. So next I photographed the pump from a different angle inside the garage and I shot two frames which were both the exact same except for different exposures. Stuff everywhere here. Just going around back to these cars but check out this scene, this old toilet. Just never see stuff like this anymore. From a different time. Might have to make a frame of that. Okay, gonna go F8, 15th of a second for this one. That's at ISO 80. Gonna start overexposing this a little bit more just to be safe. Four frames, 
do one more here and then go to the next spot. All sorts of cameras today. Got this Ritrek 6x6 back that I've just got repaired and I'm trying to finish a test roll, so might as well use it on this as well because this scene here, this whole place is, is great. This is also pretty cool, this old Volkswagen Polo. I think I will photograph this because it's got obviously a nice bright red. Give me a good idea of how the colors look on this film. It is a neat scene too. F-16, I think we'll go. I really hope this film isn't complete garbage because uh, I'm actually quite excited about some of these images. Leaves us with one frame for the next spot. So that turned out amazing, you know, like four hours this morning of going to places and them not working out. But this was a, a really cool find, just like random search on Google Maps. So I think what I'm gonna do is go to this other place, try and shoot this last sheet, it's pretty close by, and then we'll go back, get these in some chemicals, develop them, and scan them and see if it turned out, fingers crossed. But uh, first, I'm gonna get some fuel. I think it's the least I can do. And this is also full service, which is like a rarity nowadays. So, gotta take advantage of this. Uh, fill it up, please. Yeah, thank you, I really appreciate that. All right, we're in Redford. Let's see if we can find this garage. So I did, in fact, find the garage, and it turned out to be pretty awesome. Uh, so awesome that I ended up shooting a bunch there, including a portrait of the owner uh, with the last sheet of their color, which isn't pictured here. Just finished up at this location. I didn't actually film anything because I was just chatting with the owner of this garage and uh, made a couple portraits of him, so kind of got in the zone and uh, shot the last sheet of very color, and then actually shot two sheets of HP5, and then shot a little bit on the Rit Track as well. So um, that's it. That was a turned out to be a really good day, considering the morning and the first like four or five hours were kind of a bust. But uh, those two locations were awesome. So time to head back, develop, and uh, I didn't think I'd make images that I was actually quite excited about. So I hope uh, a I don't mess up development. B the film turns out. But uh, let's go and see what we get. So we'll jump back into things in a second, just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. So this year I've wanted to place more focus on my website and that includes giving it a refresh and an update with new work. Something that is incredibly easy to do using Squarespace. They have a wide range of really nice professional looking templates to choose from, but then also they give you complete control of how your images are displayed, including gallery styles, image sizes, thumbnails, captions, and more. You can also customize all of their aspects of your site using their simplified drag and drop designer. It's giving you endless options for your business with things like online shops to sell your work or even hosting your own courses. So check out squarespace.com today, sign up for a free trial, test it out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, so welcome to my glamorous developing room, also known as my bathroom in the office. Um, it's been a couple months since I've done any color development, so I had the CP2, the Jobo, kind of taken apart and emptied for now. So first thing I got to do is uh, get this filled back up, get some uh, containers filled with distilled water, put in here, and get everything heating up so I can mix the uh, development chemicals. We'll jump out there after and do that. So that's what I'm going to start with, and then uh, we'll load some film, pull the chemicals out of the cupboard, kind of run through everything, and get going here as quick as I can. We're gonna focus on uh, the 4x5 color to start. I'll do the 120 in this tank as well, but I'm gonna use this uh, Jobo 2520 tank. And then this is, a, I think it's a 2509N insert. This is for 4x5 film. Uh, and this is so nice to use compared to anything else I've done for 4x5. Really easy to load. You can do six sheets and it takes 
270 mil of chemical, but I think I'm gonna split the sheets up just in case I might do four and two. Gonna get some uh, water in here, heating up, and then we'll go load this. Water for dev, bleach, fix, and initial rinse. Gonna let those heat up and then I can mix my chemicals. So for C41, I'm using a new kit from Jobo. It's a three part with a separate bleach and fix. And I just mix this up in 500 milliliter batches, which is perfect for the CPE. And I've been really, really happy with the results from this kit. Just has great colors and tones and converts really easy without any strange color casts. All right, we're almost there, everything's heating up. I am going to probably stop recording the developing process now just because I want to get through this. And then uh, with the negative reveal, I will roll then. Fingers crossed there's something on there. My initial rinse has half a degree left. I'm gonna check the temps of the uh, developer after that. And then we'll go to it. Really, 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 really hope we got something. Looks like it. <laughs> Let's get these out of here. They look a little strange, but we'll see. Could just be the light in here as well. That, to me, looks like a, a negative. Okay, so day two basically went and shut off the camera last night and developed everything, the very color, the black and white, the 120, and uh, ready to take a look at it all. So the very color, gotta say, little bit disappointed, kind of strange to be honest. The first two sheets uh, actually are kind of what I expected. They look pretty good. They're a little bit thin, a uh, little bit strange when it comes to color. They're like a pale orange kind of gray, but there is density throughout both of them. Like there's information there and they'll probably scan not too bad. But for whatever reason, the uh, batch of four that I did are really, really thin to the point where when I pulled these out of the tank, I almost thought that they were blank. But uh, when you hold them up to a light source, there is some information there. So yeah, there'll be something. This one, uh, especially this is the a portrait I did at the end of that garage owner. And like the only thing you can see on here is his face and the garage doors in the sky. So I don't think it's gonna look too good. And in hindsight, I probably should have given this film way more light. Um, it's ISO 160, 25 year old film. And I was shooting it at a hundred or, or maybe 80, uh, probably even this last image cause I wanted to stay around a 60th for this portrait and it was getting a little darker. This was probably shot at box speed. Yeah, two or even three stops over is what I probably should have gone for this. And you know, in the future, I'll probably go and do another test and, uh, and see where it works best. Cause obviously it can look decent um, or you can at least get a negative with information on it. So yeah, have to go and try that again. And I even uh, in between the two and four sheet batch went and developed a roll of 120 that I shot through that Ritrek six by six hammer just to uh, make sure there was nothing wrong with like the chemicals or the process. And this looks like as good as it gets. So um, yeah, anyways, be curious to see how these look. And I jump over there now, um, scan these and we'll hop on the computer, take a look. Okay, so I didn't think we we're gonna dip into day three for this video. It's been a little bit of a beast to be completely honest. Uh, but we'll take a look at these images here. I'm gonna show you the first uh, conversions, the six images that I did with the GFX, kind of the ones that I'm happy with. But then I'm gonna take you through kind of this rabbit hole I went down and different ways I scan this and different tools I use, basically just trying to like figure out um, exactly what was going on and make sure that I was understanding it correctly. Uh, but jumping into these, so the first two negatives that were exposed properly converted pretty nice. For the most part, they just kind of look like color negative film. A little bit of fading along the edges, uh, but they have a decent look and it shows me that if you, you know, expose this film properly, you could get a, like a pretty normal look from it 
for the most part. But as you get into the four frames that were underexposed and pretty thin, you start to see a lot more of this like fogging or, or fading along the edges. And the colors still look pretty nice and punchy, but it certainly starts to have a lot more of that expired film look to it. And I will say that I don't really ever shoot expired film. I've shot like a handful of rolls in the past and I've never shot it uh, with four by five before. And using that GFX setup uh, with four by five film, I've always been really, really happy with this kind of scans I get. You can see here with this HP5 with some like fresh film that's exposed properly, you get these really clean scans with none of that kind of like reverse vignetting. But I have noticed in the past with like the odd frame that gets a little bit thin, uh, I've started to see with color negative film like a little bit of that uh, light bleed almost, which I've thought is maybe from like unevenness of the light pad just with the larger negative or maybe some like stray light or the lens getting flared a little bit. So I started to wonder like, is that what I'm seeing in these images? You know, is it from the film itself or is it from my scanning setup, especially again, as the negatives start to get quite thin. So like I said, I went down this massive rabbit hole. I rescanned these frames like five different times using different light sources and, you know, diffusion panels and like masking off everything with gaff tape and all sorts of different stuff. And for the most part, all of those images ended up looking pretty much identical. So that didn't really help me too much. And that basically led me to like go on this wild hunt of trying to source out a flatbed scanner. I eventually found a V700 and I went and scanned all of these frames uh, on the Epson flatbed. And what was really interesting is uh, if we go to a comparison here, we'll put the GFX on the left and the Epson on the right. These were all converted in Negative Lab Pro the exact same way. You can see the Epson does look a little bit better. Obviously it's uh, cropped a bit because you don't get those edges. But as you start to look close, you can see that that fading is in the exact same area still. It's still showing up on the Epson. GFX on left, Epson on right, especially if you look like right here on these ones, you can see it's showing up in the same areas. And then especially as we get into these negatives that were pretty thin, same thing you're seeing it in the exact same spots. And as you go and actually look at the negatives close, you can see that fogging on the film itself. And I think the reason it looks worse on the GFX is just because for whatever reason, the GFX files, the colors are just like a lot more punchy and saturated. I had to jack them up on the Epson to even come close to matching. And I think the this like fogging or fading is a lot more saturated on the GFX because of that and it's kind of making it look worse. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty much showing up in the exact same areas on both of the scanning methods. Especially if we look at this last one here, you can see it's really heavy on the Epson as well. It does look a bit worse on the GFX, but for the most part, you know, the, it's showing up in the exact same areas. So uh, it was nice to do that just again to rule out my scanning method. Maybe there is a little bit of that uh, like unevenness of light source or, you know, flaring of the lens. But obviously this film, like the film itself does have uh, some issues. That's just like from improper storage or who knows, it's 25 year old film. I don't know where it was before I got my hands on it or where it was stored or what its life was like. But it was nice, you know, <laughs> to go through that and just see how both kind of methods handled these like really thin expired negatives. And I will say um, at first when I developed these, you know, saw these four that looked pretty bad. And then when I scanned them, I was a little bit disappointed, but I think it's because I'm so used to working with fresh film and always like striving to kind of get like the best exposure and best development process and like have everything be as perfect as possible. Forgetting that the whole reason I shot with this film in the first place was to get a different look, like a one-off, really unique kind of expired film look. And that's certainly what these are. So uh, these first two frames, which I was like, oh, well, at least I got two that turned out decent. These are the ones that I like the least. And now uh, these ones with this look, with this heavy fogging are the ones I enjoy the most. 
So yeah, I love the idea of potentially using this film in the future uh, in locations like this, just bringing it along, you know, shooting in these situations and just really trying to like embrace the unpredictability of this and almost use it like a little bit of a creative tool. It certainly has a look to it. Um, also, just for fun, these were some of the Rittrek 6x6 frames. This is uh, Kodak Gold. I actually really like both of these. I like this portrait quite a bit. Uh, one thing that I learned right away though is that 80 mil f2 shooting it wide open is so easy to miss focus like absolutely need a way to check critical focus with that so um yeah that'll be a fun one to shoot with cool to see this camera's working uh, this is some gold from that location and just shot a couple of extra images throughout the day but yeah nice to see that one back from a pair is kind of back in action Excited to work with that moving forward. But uh, overall, this was a really fun one to do. Uh, it turned into like a way bigger process than I imagined it was going to be. I thought I was going to wrap everything up in one day. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's fun to kind of go down these rabbit holes and test out different things and work with something new and just basically learn a lot. So um, I have 44 sheets of this Varicolor left, and I'm 100% going to use it on this stuff moving forward and kind of excited to see uh, what I get out of the rest of it as I work with it. Anyways, I'm going to go now. This has been a big one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your experience if you've worked with expired film, what kind of results you've gotten, uh, anything like that. Other than that, I just want to say, as always, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you very soon.